Hello everyone, my name is Leonie Stenske and I work as a research fellow at the Berlin Institute for Islamic Theology at Humboldt University of Berlin in Germany. More specifically, I'm part of the junior research group concerned with the study of practices in Islamic contexts during um, using practice theory. My field of research are kindergarten and more specifically um, Islamic kindergarten. Um, and there I uh, look at intergenerational knowledge transform, transfer. Um, today I use my time to talk about one aspect of my research that is the history and genesis of Islamic kindergarten in Berlin and what food has to do with it. In the 1880s and 1890s in West Germany and later in reunited Germany, there were few kindergarten spots due to conservative family politics, um, placing the educational responsibility uh, on the stay at home mother. On top of the supply dif difficulties, kindergarten spots were expensive. This meant that not many children went to kindergarten before entering elementary school. From this perspective of Muslim migrant women at the time, coming mostly from Turkey, getting a spot was connected with barriers, for example, language and religion wise. When talking about when talking to my informants about this time, some 30 to 40 years ago, they tell me that they knew that port meat was served during breakfast and lunch. Those mothers that got hold of a kindergarten spot for their child went out of their way to provide substitutes for the port meat. However, their request to prevent port meat being served to their children was often overheard, ignored, and not respected by the staff. Of course, there were also counter stories um, of well working arrangements. However, the child would always feel like an outsider. The women I talked to say that the difficulties they encountered when negotiating about the kindergarten food was not only or were not only the violation of trust between staff and parents, but also a sign of disrespect against their traditions. And pork meat this way became a sign of power used against them, their children, families, and communities. Eating together in kindergarten, later in school, universities, work, canteens, and so on, include doings and sayings performed oftentimes unnoticed um, that make the everyday go by smoothly. We're here in the realm of practice theory. An especially effective type of practices are eating practices because they are performed continuously. We eat to survive, to experience through our senses the taste of the world. We eat to create community and we eat as devotional acts. People working in educational settings play a vital role in the reproduction of eating practices. From the early childhood years on, the basis of our eating practices are set in the different situations in which we learn how to eat. In the context of early childhood education, food plays a vital role. What children eat and how they eat it is coined by different factors. Food practices are markers that refer to eating communities. They fulfill the function of identity reproduction and social distinction. In general, there is no single foodscape in Germany or anywhere else. Food practices are coined by different categories like gender, socioeconomic upbringing, and the access to research sources by religion, state of the health, and so on. Um, so let's move on to the leading research questions. How did the foodscape in Berlin's kindergarten change over the past three decades? And which role did kindergarten teachers play in this change? Um, just a quick note, uh, my general research is way broader and there are a lot of other research questions. For um, today's talk, I limited the research questions to these two. Uh, quick, quick words to literature review and methods. My analysis is based on empirical material I collected during my field work in kindergarten, uh, kitchens with parents, uh, children, staff. I talk to organizations concerned with um, uh, nutrition of children and so on. Um, I mostly conduct participatory observation. That means I'm eating together with children in kindergarten. I conduct field talks 
um, and then I analyze documents concerned with the topic. Concerning the literature re review, there are no studies looking at kindergarten education and religious food practices in Berlin or in Germany. However, food and kindergarten is um, a hot topic in Germany. The nutrition of the next generation is targeted in many publications, mostly directed at pedagogic staff, for example, um, issued, for example, by the German Society for Nutrition. Um, or state brochures that target more specifically the empirical realities of kindergarten in Berlin. Um, there is, for example, a study about uh, school lunch in Germany and its um, quotation integrational potential um, of, of vegetarian food. When it comes to food, um, food practices in Islam, there is a growing body of literature on the halal economy and individual consumption choices. Um, also internationally, I'm not aware of a publication that targets food practices in Islamic kindergarten um, in a majority non-Muslim society, but I'm most open uh, to receive literature tips from, well, the international audience. Um, yeah, shoot me an email. It would be amazing. Let's move on to the main findings then. So let's come um, to the findings and um, to um, a very well right through history. <laughs> um, a lot has changed since the 1980s and 90s. Um, in 1996 and 2013, legal rights to kindergarten spots were established. Um, 1996 for um, these rights were ex established for over three year old children and in 2013 for one year old children. Since then, many new kindergartens were founded the 16 federal states of Germany handled the legal right to a kindergarten spot differently. Um, Berlin, for example, broke down barriers for founders and made the kindergarten free of charge. Um, next to the eastern federal states of Germany, um, that means the former um, the, the states that were located in the former GDR, um, Berlin has one of the highest rates of children going to kindergarten in Germany over the age of one. So um, two thirds of children uh, under the age of six uh, eat lunch in uh, facilities, in kindergarten facilities. So food is imminent. There are many Islamic kindergartens in Berlin today. Um, some carry an Islamic pedagogic concept and call themselves Islamic or Muslim openly. Um, this reflects in the facility's names or um, on the information provided on their websites. Uh, the majority uh, of the, the kindergartens, however, um, that I um, count as Islamic um, follow multi multicultural um, and language-based uh, concepts. They, um, however, are seen by parents and other kindergarten um, as Islamic because of their staff, the children that visit the facility, and the choice of food. Um, interpersonal trust plays a big role here. So uh, kindergartens are deemed Islamic, even though they are not officially, officially means in their name or in their concept. Um, uh, but the uh, 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 religious affiliation of the staff plays an important role there. All of these, these facilities were opened in the past 30 years by Muslim women, um, oftentimes migrants of the first or second generation and converts. Many um, of, of them, of the founders, uh, took their motivation from the experience of their own children um, in public kindergarten, what I said initially. Um, they call um, the liberty to choose which food will be on the table as one um, of the main motivations uh, to start the, kinder the undertaking to open a kindergarten. So the first finding is that Muslim women have changed the kindergarten scape in Berlin over the past 30 years as founders of kindergarten. They have opened kindergarten and started implementing their own pedagogical concepts, sometimes religion-based, sometimes language or culture-based. At the beginning of these undertakings, however, food played an important role. This way, secondly, they um, create spaces where a continuity of religious food practices in educational contexts and over generations is made possible by, by taking matters um, in their own hands. Muslim women create a space where intergenerational religious knowledge, knowledge is passed on. 
um, and a continuity between home and educational context is fostered and where belonging through food practices is learned. This knowledge follows a person throughout their entire life. Thirdly, in Islamic kindergarten in Berlin, um, the food is um, mostly vegetarian. This um, it holds true for most kindergarten in Berlin. Nowadays, um, most kindergarten in Berlin serve vegetarian food or um, a choice of vegetarian food. This has to do with different reasons, um, changes in um, uh, the knowledge we have about what the good, a good diet is um, in the, for example, um, in the context of Islamic kindergarten, however, there are um, also other factors. Um, many of the parents have divergent ideas of what uh, proper halal food is. So there are different models to um, um, encounter um, these divergent ideas, for example, to provide a meal for all. That means there are different models. Um, one um, a choice between halal meat and a veggie option. Secondly, mostly in smaller um, facilities, only vegetarian food, or in some facilities, there is only vegetarian food except for once a week where a parent cooks for all the children. My conclusion. So when we look at my research questions, how did the foodscape in Berlin change over the past three decades and which role did kindergarten teachers play in this change? can say that um, through my analysis of the role uh, food played and plays in religious contexts in kindergarten, um, it is possible to retrace continuities and changes in educational settings in Berlin, um, which exposes new players and ideas. Next to the institutional level, the analysis of food and practices show that space is created this way to ensure continuity of religious practices in the next generation. Um, and the importance of kindergarten in this transmission of practices is this way also underlined. Lastly, eating together in kindergarten creates a sense of community, of belonging, not being foreign to the uh, German Berlin educational system from the beginning is a strong foundation for the future. So thank you. Uh, feel free to contact me with any questions and comments. Stop here for <laughs> literature um, and... Um, Thank you for this opportunity.